Hello, my name is Kate Semlin from the Carbon Leadership Forum, and I'm here to make a quick video titled, Where's My Data? EC3 Tool Tips for Manufacturers. Down at the bottom here, you can see an email that you can um, send any key data related questions to. The Embodied Carbon Construction Calculator is incubated by the Carbon Leadership Forum, but brought together by over 50 organizations supporting the initiative and developing collaboration with Sea Change Labs. You can learn more about the data methodology on the web Carbon Leadership Forum website up above and to register for the tool and can get connected to a community of users at the buildingtransparency.org site listed below. Fundamentally, the EC3 tool is a database of environmental product declarations that's sortable by embodied carbon that can be linked to material quantity estimates and wrapped up at a whole building scale. Leaning on publicly reported environmental product declarations uh, is the core of the data in the EC3 tool. A second key feature is that rather than using the benefit of the doubt, as is currently done by most life cycle assessment methods, in which the industry average data is the default if we don't know who the manufacturer is, the EC3 tool takes a burden of the doubt approach and makes a conservative estimate from each material category uh, and functions as, that functions as a baseline. So the, this baseline is a high estimate of embodied carbon and reductions against this high estimate are tracked in the embodied carbon and construction calculator, showing the range of opportunity for improvement within a material category. In some material categories, that range is uh, very high. There's very diverse manufacturing processes and diverse embodied carbon impacts and others, uh, it is less known or uh, um, smaller. When you're looking at data in the EC3 tool, you'll see a couple of um, key thing, graphs appearing multiple times. So I wanna go over that really quickly. So on the left-hand side is the data that's in the category. Uh, so as a category such as carpet or reinforcing steel. And so the green bar, uh, this full bar is the, the extent of data that is in the EC3 tool today. So which EPDs we have incorporated into the EC3 tool. The high part here, mark A, 917, is the highest embodied carbon EPD in the database. At point C here, this green top of the green bar means that 80% of the EPDs in the database are below this amount. And at the point F here, the bottom part of the green bar, 20% of the EPDs in the database are below that point. And point G down here is the lowest point in the EPD database. So on the left-hand side is all of the data in the Embodied Carbon and Construction Calculator database. On, on the right-hand side, you can see the information about the specific EPD in question. So here, the black line represents the data that's been reported in the EPD, normal, um, standardized for the same units that we're looking at related to the category. The blue fuzzy bar here is an estimate of the variability and uncertainty in the e, um, EPD uh, um, as evaluated using approximate methods. So this is an area that is really in beta at this time and we're looking for feedback and information about how to characterize that. And in the EC3 tool, every product category um, is treated the same. So all steels are currently traded the same, all flooring, all um, um, per category. So the uncertainty effect is applied uniformly by each different category. So taking the burden of the doubt approach, the EC3 tool sorts based on the high level of this uncertainty, uh, not the average. And all of this is compared against a Carbon Leadership Forum beta baseline uh, number. And these baseline values are uh, high estimates within each material category. They're not designed to be a limit, a target, um, a threshold, but really a, a fixed point in time in which relative performance can be measured against. So I wanna go right now quickly into the, into the tool itself. If you um, got to the Building Transparency website, you would click the sign in tab. Uh, when you click the sign in tab, you get your login. So uh, once, once you have your login and you're able to access the tool, uh, you would log in and you get to this first opening page, which shows the current count of data that's in the tool. So there's uh, a related for manufacturers, there's one key, a key place that you can go to look, look for materials. So in the find a materials tab, tab you can see the, the materials that are currently supported 
in the public beta launch. Uh, and if I go on, uh, look at gypsum board here, uh, a sorting field comes up. So the, um, there, within the top here are different performance attributes of the material that as we flush out the tool and data gets better available in EPDs, users will be able to sort for more performance aspects of each material. So if you click on the right over here, you can search, and that'll tell you the EPDs in the database with the search criteria that we have. So you can see we have a search criteria of the US. So there are 58 EPD results um, in the US. If I re remove that uh, filter by geography and region, I can search through here and see um, even more EPDs uh, result show up. A key thing to note is that they're only, we're only showing EPDs that are currently valid. So you can see this valid after date, which is today when I'm searching. If you want to change that, you can go in here and you know say that I want EPDs that are valid, um, you know, uh, that can be valid up to an earlier date. And we can increase the search. Oops, I didn't change the date. You have to um, tick up pick an actual day and we'll see um, turns out there are no it doesn't look like there are any unexpired gypsum wallboard EPDs so then you can search through here and identify all the EPDs by program operator by category by product or plant uh, description or you can even sort by embodied carbon but here I'm going to talk look um, by manufacturer so I'm, I see certain teed here is uh, up at top um, and I'm just going to search for all of CertainTeed's um, products? Why, what am I doing it wrong? So I can get all the CertainTeed's products listed along here. And for each of these products, then you can click on the detail steam screen and you can see just an overview of the product and how it relates to that. And then you can view, um, view the data entry for that product here. So here you can see some of the more detailed information that's in the database about the EPD. So the, the, the product name, the declared unit, the mass, the embodied carbon, um, and then the estimation of uncertainty. And I'll get into estimation of uncertainty in another, um, another video. So the, the key thing to note is that you might, you might get here and see that A, some EPDs are missing, or B, something seems funny, like you notice that you, um, uh, if down in these Mo, uh, Moundsville plants, there's, there looks to be perhaps um, duplicates of the board here, type 5 eighths inch, and oh, then so you can see there's two different thicknesses, 5 eighths and one half inch. And then, but there's another 5 eighths inch here that has a 2620 and a 2490. So this looks like that there might actually be an error in this, um, this EPD, being twice in the database, or it might be that there's something unique about the EPD that shows multiple different products with slight variations. Maybe one is uh, foil faced or something like that. So you can uh, do uh, two things. The, uh, probably the first step would be to go um, into the view function for that EPD, uh, look to see whether or not um, the description of it matches what you, uh, your understanding is that you can download the EPD and see that we have the correct EPD in place. And, and, and if, if you might find that you understand what's happening uh, by looking at this, but you also might identify that there's a problem. Um, you've checked your EPD and it has the wrong, wrong number here. So uh, uh, oops. what I would do is just take a, um, a snip of this slide, um, uh, take a mark. Oops. Well, actually I probably wouldn't send this one. Well, if I knew this was wrong, let's say if I knew this was wrong, Oops. You could mark up that um, mark up an image of what's wrong, and then send an email to the CLF uh, helpline and say, "I've noticed something that's wrong on my EPD, uh, and I want help resolving it." Uh, as we um, move uh, forward, let's see where do I get um, bring. Here I am logged in. Um, in this case, I'm logged in as a program operator. So as a program operator, uh, program operators will be able to do um, review and edit the EPDs uh, in their program. So here, the verify and audit field only shows up as valid for somebody who is logged in as a program operator. And we will be working to bring 
um, program operators um, up into the access to the tool into December. So uh, at, once that is in the case, program operators will be able to um, open up the EPDs in their section. And then at this point, you can um, modify things directly. So uh, the uh, program operator then is able to edit the database, is able to uh, reassign uncertainty assessments based on their understanding of the product and update the product information uh, here directly. So in the near term, these edits will need to be done by the, uh, the data team of the EC3 tool as we work to refine the functionality. But the, the goal is that the, all of the data on the EPD will be edited and uh, editable by the program operator. So again, uh, this is a, an attempt to help uh, you understand how to access and find data in the EC3 tool. Uh, we welcome you to the community form. Uh, there's a, um, when you get to the community forum, there's a, um, a, an online place where people can post questions and answer them. So we'll be directing general questions to that community forum, specific data around your specific issues and errors in your data. Please uh, then go to the email here. Thank you very much. Bye.